Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, it's a brand new year with 2023 finally getting here. And, uh, well, uh, maybe not a brand new year for direction when it comes to Wizards uh, and Magic the Gathering. We shall see. 2022 had a lot of good things, a lot of bad things as well. And one of the things that the community, uh, you know, did not enjoy nearly as much, it seems, is that there was a lot of product fatigue. There was a ton of products, an absurd amount of products that came out last year, and uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be slowing down or not. So, Mark Rosewater, uh, the head designer over at Wizards on Blogatog, Mark's blog, if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out, and I'll link the uh, response in uh, in this uh, you know description down below. So yeah, basically Mark was asked a question by Winter Warp. They asked, hi Mark, I have a personal experience that I'd like to share that affects my perspective on the conversations around product fatigue. When the original Game Night product came out, I didn't even know that it existed. I didn't learn about its existence until something like two years later, and my thought was, I would have liked to have known about that at that time. My reaction to having completely and utterly been unaware of a product like that was to try to increase the amount of effort I put into learning about new products that were coming out in order to prevent another product that I would like to engage with from going under my radar. The problem is that even just paying attention to what's coming out can become exhausting and overwhelming with the amount of products which have been getting released. So I guess my point is that when I hear you and other spokespeople responding to complaints of product fatigue by saying, only engage with the products that most excite you, that doesn't seem to address the problem that the process of paying attention in order to know which products most excite you can itself be overwhelming and exhausting. Paying attention can be exhausting, and not paying attention can lead to products you would have loved going under your radar. Mark responded with this. Here's the challenge. There's a lot of different Magic players that want very different things. We want to produce what makes Magic special for each player in enough volume that they stay invested. That's what's going on. We're trying to make sure our proverbial buffet always has the food that excites each individual diner. Putting out less food means that we're depriving some diners of the food that makes them most excited to come to the buffet. We do that long enough and they stop coming. A good example of this is while people suggest we offer less products, which products go away is under great debate. Everyone wants the thing they love to stay and the things they enjoy less to go away, but which is which varies person to person. Also, we're always trying to attract new diners. Certain food might make some diners sample the buffet that haven't tried it before. New lifeblood is fundamental to any game, but especially one with Magic's longevity. Any food option remove and pack someone and makes them enjoy the buffet less. I get that it makes the buffet hard to process at large, but fundamentally, a buffet is about picking and choosing the food that makes the best meal for you, not groking the menu as a whole. What I think is going on in Magic is at another flux point, and it's had many over the years. It's adapting to player desires and changing in new ways. When that happens, both the audience and R&D has to adapt as well. Maybe we have to change how we communicate new products. Maybe there needs to be a lighter track for those that want a sense of what's coming without the depth that we normally provide. I agree that the old systems might not make sense in the new world, but I don't think it's a reason to reject the new world. It's a reason to figure out how to adapt. So, okay, there's a lot to take in there, but I kind of want to make sure that it was all essentially, well, said and highlighted because, yeah, um, I think that a buffet is a pretty good comparison. It's pretty perfect because, oh, I mean, when it comes to um, when it comes to buffets uh, and kind of, you know, food comparisons, let's just say uh, magic is uh, Chipotle. Uh, I mean, I personally enjoy Chipotle. I don't know about you, but anyways, let's say Magic's Chipotle, all right? You know what you're going to be getting at Chipotle, right? You can get your own specific order at Chipotle, okay? Uh, sorry, Chipotle is not a sponsor of this channel. I just want to say that ahead of time, regardless. Anyways, hi, Chipotle. Love you. Uh, anyways, you know what you're getting at Chipotle. It's going to be delicious, but sometimes it can upset your stomach. And you know what? That happens with Magic over the years. You know, basically, you know, it's going to be delicious when you want to go get it, but it's also going to be upsetting your stomach. And you want to go back occasionally to Chipotle, right? You're not going to be going to Chipotle every day. You can't handle Chipotle every day. And Magic, again, if they were, you know, Chipotle years ago, uh, now, yeah, Mark, they probably are a buffet. Uh, they're Golden Corral. Uh, they've got everything and everything, everything and anything, and uh, there's no focus to it. It's just 
Buffet, every kind of food you could possibly imagine, any kind of food, all the time, every piece of food. Do you want five pieces of cake? Here's your five pieces of cake. Do you want 10 steaks with a side of uh, jelly? Sure, why not? You can have anything and everything all the time. You're going to be stuffed uh, and you're going to have to kind of, you know, roll yourself out uh, of the building at the end of the day. Um, and that's just kind of, you know, what this product of fatigue has become. You know, it's not, you know, here's great product, you know, that that is focused. It's more like, no, no, here's a shotgun blast of product, essentially. And maybe you'll like some of it, essentially, but it's impossible for you to pay attention to everything. And, and again, yes, that's kind of, you know, what Wizards MO these days is saying is, not everything is for everyone, and sure, I agree with that. I mean, I'm going to Chipotle, I'm not going to, you know, order something that, you know, that I typically don't like, but they do have a focused menu. Well, I mean, they have a focused menu. You know that you're going to be going there to, you know, get a specific kind of food, essentially. You might not like everything there, but you like what you like there. Versus, you know, now it's just like, oh, yeah, everything. Just eat, 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 eat. <laughs> and it's just like, I mean... Yeah, I, I think it's a pretty apt comparison that Mark, you know, actually just said buffet because that's uh, been a thought around mine for a while now where it's just like they're trying to do too much. You can't, I mean, you can't like, you know, just actually make every single person happy all the time. You can't, you know, try to make every single player your best friend, essentially. You know, you can't say, oh, you're my friend, you're my friend too, you're my friend too. If you try to make everyone happy, you're going to end up making no one happy. If you try to have, you know, 50 best friends, you're not going to have enough time to spend with all of them, essentially, right? Like, I mean, for another kind of weird comparison with that. But yeah, it's like, again, Wizards is saying, well, like, well, we can't cut anything because we might upset one tiny, you know, one tiny segment over here or one tiny segment over there or one segment over there. Sure. But um, yeah, it's just become a bit much, hasn't it? I mean, there's a pretty perfect comment on Blogatog from Ms. Kale that said, it's sometimes good to not offer something for a bit to make it more desirable. It can come back in the future. So yeah, sure. Okay, there might be specific kind of products for specific kind of players that, you know, they might want them. But yeah, maybe, you know, spread those out. Last year, it just seemed like everyone and everything and this is happening, you know, we have to make sure every player gets everything they want all the time versus like, okay, yeah, sure. You don't have to do this kind of a product or this kind of a set every single, you know, couple of months or every single year, essentially spread it out, you know, make it more... Um, you know, make it more surprising, make it more enjoyable that way instead of again, oh, great, yeah, um, Chipotle again tomorrow, Chipotle again the next day, Chipotle again the next day. So, yeah, it, it, instead of, you know, overloading players, you know, take your time, spread it out. Less is more in some ways. And, and yeah, I mean, are you going to be able to make everyone happy with every decision you make? No. But when it comes to making the right decisions for the game and its longevity, I don't think doing what you were doing last year is the answer. And I think you're getting feedback from, again, your most invested players and your most invested portion of the community saying, don't do this. And you're saying, well, we're going to keep doing it because, well, and your justification is we're trying to make everyone happy, but it's also money, profit. Uh, and when it comes to kind of like, you don't have to be invested in everything. And that's kind of, you know, a, a again, something that Wizards keep saying, essentially, and those from Wizards keep saying, yes and no, because... When it comes to your main format now, right? That is Commander. Commander is the main format. Commander is the focus on so many things. Well, that's a good thing in some ways. That's a very bad thing in some ways because now it seems that basically every single physical product has some kind of a tie to Commander. There's some kind of a focus on Commander in some capacity. And again, that's kind of like a selling point for that product. So you could say, you know, sure. Um, we have, you know, these products that are just, you know, for these kinds of players, but also we're going to sprinkle in some commander cards in there too. So the commander players have to focus on that as well. I mean, commander basically has become like that catch all to sell a product. They're like, oh, okay, well, this product's for those people, but slap some commanders in there, put some commander staples in there essentially. Now that will sell for the commander players as well, because that's our biggest portion of the audience. We need to make sure that they buy this product to make sure that the product actually does well and performs well. It's not just for those players. It's for those players plus commander. So it's kind of expanding outside of its intended audience in a way. Uh, and, and basically, I mean, like, let's just say with, like, you know, Unfinity last year, right? Uh, yeah, Unfinity, those that enjoy, you know, those, uh, the unsets essentially. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sure they enjoyed it very much. Uh, but unlike previous unsets, this one had a change this year. Again, somewhat of an awkward change and one that, you know, I, I definitely, you know, went back and forth on whether, you know, I thought it was a good change or not. Uh, and now uh, looking back on the year... And again, the amount of product fatigue that there was, I mean, I don't think actually, you know, making uncards, you know, commander legal or uh, legacy legal, you know, in some ways, again, with the, you know, the non-acorn treatment, again, they went away from silver border because they wanted commander players, you know, 
to actually, you know, pay attention to this set and actually potentially buy cards from this set to utilize. They switched that over to, oh, Black Border, but then the ones that are, you know, uncards essentially that you can't play are Acorns instead. So they made that change essentially so they can say, oh, look, Commander players, new Commanders from this set. Buy, 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 buy Unfinity as well. Pay attention to Unfinity. If Unfinity, again, was just a Silver Border set, it wouldn't have gotten as much flack as it did because, yeah, I mean, again, you're only having a very specific portion of your community actually paying attention to it. Versus, again, since it is a legal set in Commander, except for, you know, the Acorn cards, Commander players pay attention to it. They, they are, you know, and that became just a bit too much. That product fatigue became a real thing. Kind of right when Unfinity hit, it was like, oh, okay, this spoiler season, this, oh, another spoiler season? Yeah, I, I mean, it just became a bit much. I mean, another product, I mean, Secret Layers. You know, Secret Layers obviously are targeted at Commander players as well. Hey, bling out your deck, bling out these cards. You know, um, you know, if you want those, great. But also, hey, okay, we're going to do a collaboration with Street Fighter. Uh, this secret there you have to pay attention to because, yeah, these are now new legal commanders. And it's not a coincidence, obviously, that when you have other IPs being brought in, that they're going to want to highlight them, you know, with the biggest format in Magic and make sure there's a connection there. And obviously, there's a pretty easy connection where you're like, oh, okay, yeah, there's some characters from our IP. Cool. This, you know, format, commander, is all about characters. It's all about, you know, legendary creatures. We'll make them legendary. Now they're commanders. So yeah, the secret layer, you know, uh, you know, uh, collaboration essentially becomes, hey, selling it to commander players. It's not just, you know, oh yeah, just for secret layer, you know, or not just for secret layer fans, not just for Street Fighter fans. It's, hey, do you get play commander? Here's eight more commanders you need to pay attention to. Yeah, now there's 425 commanders this year for a reason because it just keeps getting more and more and more ridiculous. Uh, I mean, even Jumpstart 2022, right? I mean, again, with the product fatigue that kept coming up this year, I mean, I'm not even mentioning Transformers or whatever that product was too that came out around there too. But there's just like, oh, by the way, yeah, end of the year, yeah, sure, okay, we have Jumpstart as well. Uh, also, yeah, there's some commanders in there too. So yeah, I mean, sure, you can say that that product is for new players. Yeah, uh, but but now you're putting in, you know, new cards and again, commander focused cards in that too, because you're like, well, we want to make sure commander players actually buy this as well and care about it as well. And here's some commanders in there too. So it, it just becomes again, again, you can say engage with what you want to engage with. But when your number one format is one that you are essentially having engage with everything, uh, again, whether, you know, that, that's, you know, a very focused engagement, you know, with a commander specific product like pre-cons, which now hit pre-cons all the time, it is no longer, you know, a Christmas kind of thing, you know, it's no longer a holiday kind of thing. It's no longer, you know, like, oh, look at this awesome, you know, present, cool. Oh, once a year we get this. No, it's Christmas every day. Every single set is going to have commander pre-cons. So it's just like... It's not unique anymore. It's not, um, you know, exciting anymore. It's just something that just is. It's just something that just happens. It's just something that, hey, instead of having, you know, five or 10 pre-cons in a year, we've got, I don't even know how we had last year, like 30, whatever it was. So yeah, it's just, again, you can say only engage with what you want to engage with, but when you're producing this many cards, this many products that all can impact, you know, a format like Commander versus in the days when, you know, you had like, you know, Standard essentially was the main format you're only gonna be able to focus so much on standard. I mean, you only have a certain amount of sets that you can actually make in a year because you can't just over rotate the format, right? But commander does not rotate and commander cannot really be broken. So like wizards is just focusing so hard on it because they can and because they see dollar signs with it. And because again, they can make every single product they make have some kind of a tie to commander that yeah, we're gonna be over engaged that uh, yeah, players are going to have that product fatigue and just trying to kind of just dismiss it, I think is just wrong. And again, I think the buffet is an apt comparison because yeah, there's a, there's a reason why um, you said buffet. There's a reason why, I mean, I don't have a hankering to go to a Golden Corral right now. So uh, nothing against Golden Corral for those of you that enjoy Golden Corral, but no one can go to Golden Corral every single day. So uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you can't go to Chipotle every day either, but <laughs> you get my point. Anyways, if you truly want to focus on products, Wizards, then focus them. And again, you don't need to do, you know, certain things every single month or every single year or whatnot. Focus them. You know, again, maybe your next unset should not be, you know, one that actually can apply to Commander as well. You should maybe make an unset that maybe it's just Silver Border. Maybe that's, you know, something that, you know, all of us, you know, that might have been excited about, you know, that little change or whatnot. Maybe again, regretting that when it comes to, you know, product fatigue and just kind of this, the, the doldrums of, of those months where it's just like, oh my gosh, another set. Oh, another spoiler season. We just finished the last one. Um... Yeah, I mean, I personally believe that Wizards should be doing a lot less starting this year. I don't think they're going to be doing that. And I think it's the, I think they need to really focus again on quality over quantity. Because again, it does seem like 
yeah, that, that's kind of the path that they have chosen. Um, and, and yeah, it's just, it's just not a good direction uh, for, for, for things, I don't think. So yeah, I kind of, uh, you know, went off topic a little bit, you know, off the rails here and there on this. But but yeah, I, I, I hope I made my point. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you though. So let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. What are your thoughts are on, you know, product fatigue, you know, products coming out, you know, there's certain products that you would like to see, you know, maybe come out, you know, not at all or less, uh, or, you know, which kind of products do you think Wizard should be focusing on? Do you think, you know, commander players are kind of being, uh, you know, are the ones that are kind of being hyper targeted by them. And, you know, that that is applying, you know, in many of the products. So yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.